Mark, thank you so much for joining us again my, at Penn State. My pleasure, Larry. It's always a pleasure seeing you. So, so um, as I was sharing with you, we do this program called Coil Perspectives. It's an opportunity to explore a series of questions with experts, and we do that for about a year. So we're able to compare the responses from a variety of individuals. In your case, however, uh, in particular with your experience with FutureLearn, a, a, a MOOC uh, related to the Open University uh, system, uh, I thought we might take a little bit of a, of a deviation from our normal questions. Fine. So one of the issues that we deal with a lot here at Penn State is, and other institutions do as well, is around retention and student persistence and ultimately student success. And um, we, we do our best. We're, we're, our goal is to keep those students enrolled both within their classes but also within the length of their degree. We mm -hmm. want them finished. <clears throat> and, and from your talk this morning, I just got to thinking about what, what is the role of these massive open online courses in that process? Do they play? Is there some um, characteristic that they bring to that question of retention and persistence that we haven't maybe thought about or, or haven't really used as creatively. Yeah, so it's an interesting one. And I think my starting point would always have to be what's, what's the problems that it's trying to solve? So why are students ultimately not persisting? And there's a range of potential variables that affect that. So especially if you're um, either whether it's online or, or even on campus, but especially a distance. So let's just take a general student. Um, I could imagine when I'm enrolling, first question I have is, what course should I do? And there's a lot of preconceptions about what courses they're going to teach and the depth they're going and how relevant they're going to be. So one of the things that students need is more information, especially if they're choosing things from that you're not taught at high school. Um, because actually, so things like engineering and other things tend not to get much coverage, so you don't quite know what you're doing. So actually, having some small bit of content that not only just teaches you a bit about engineering, but introduces you to the concept, why it's relevant, what areas and careers you may go into, and what they specialize in, and what sort of topics therefore you need to learn, sets expectations about what they'd like to cover, what prerequisites may be there, mm -hmm. what other things they may need to test themselves on and be competent in before they go in, so that you know that the student is ready mm -hmm. and they feel ready to undertake the right program. So that's one mm -hmm. thing you could think about. So it, it, if I can just tease that apart a minute, because I think what you really hit on two points there. One is potentially interest. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm interested in engineering. Am I really? And perhaps participating in a, in a MOOC gives me the experience of saying, eh, you know, it's not as interesting as I thought, or it's more, um, it's more directed in one direction, I might want to go in the other. The second is, and, and this is one I find really uh, interesting, I mean, they're both interesting, but the idea of, of preparation. Yep. Uh, am I ready for the rigors of college study? And can a MOOC help me make some assessment? It might not be the final assessment, but some assessment. So I love those two ideas in there. Yeah. So, and the and the other one uh, which I'd expand upon is, there are study skills mm -hmm. that you can learn through other courses, mm -hmm. and part of that is, you know, you could rather than just single courses on how do you study because actually they can be quite abstract, mm -hmm. which is more mm -hmm. try a course and reflect. So how can you get people who have all taken that to come together and reflect mm -hmm. on what they've done? as part of the experience. And then you can hit them with actually, this is the way you can learn how to do things better, how you organize your time. But I think then the other things relate to the more how you're delivering the materials to students. And universities, mm. the good thing about rigid systems and ways of going through is you have deadlines. Mm -hmm. And people like deadlines. Part of the value of session-based things and having deadlines in courses is that it forces people to do them. And mm. most of us operate that way. Um, but, where you, but you also want flexibility. I mean, sometimes things are harder for people. People are slower at school, school children, we all know they accelerate at different rates, mm -hmm. but they can end up at the same place. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what curve they're on. And I think our university systems don't cater to that very well. So whether um, digital courses that can be complementary run alongside to help as a remediation mm -hmm. for some students or is it structurally a whole new way of thinking about, well, how do I deliver these components that means that you're not time-bound? 
in some way. They're a persistent part, these certain sort of introductory or basic foundation level things that you have to understand can be done at multiple different mm -hmm. points in different orders because they're modularized. That enables people to get up to speed and gain confidence in the subject matter mm -hmm. before they then maybe undertake something more difficult and rigorous. So I, I love that idea. Uh, one of the things that you uh, shared during your talk this morning was the idea of, the, of, of managing, in essence, managing digital assets. So we're going to create, and thinking about MOOCs as a mechanism to deliver those, but dig, the digital assets are the digital assets, and they can be repurposed and refunctioned. So what I'm forming in my mind as you're talking this through, Mark, is the idea that, let's just say I sign up for Engineering 101, which is a survey course, and I'm in that course, and it's a college course, and it has these bounds, and you're right, we don't accommodate for me as a slower learner or whatever. But now you're, you're suggesting that I'm in this course and I come up against, uh, uh, it's a survey course, so maybe there's something in there about structural engineering, and I, I'm not understanding quite that. But, but there's a package or there's a link there that can take me to a, an open resource, yep. call it a MOOC, but maybe it's just open. Could be anything else. That yep. are these digital assets where I can shore myself up in that content area and stay active in taking that course. So, so it's that complementary piece, I think, that's so interesting. And it is. I mean, but it, you know, at the same time, you have to make, you'd have to make sure that there's still that flexibility for people to undertake mm -hmm. the remedial activity. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's it's symptomatic of the expansion of higher education. So in the UK, there's been always a drive to get more and more people into university because it's a knowledge-driven economy. You need more degrees. Employers are looking for people with degrees for things mm -hmm. that they previously didn't require a degree for. So there seems to be this expansion of education for people. But what it didn't take account for of is that you're going to people where maybe higher education is less suitable. You know, because mm -hmm. actually it's then trying to shoehorn a, a, a wider range of people who, who aren't actually into for academic education, yes. but they need other education yes. and they need help to come in. And universities are trying to adjust for that, and they're, but they're still keeping the rigor. But I think what they're not accounting for is the fact that those people need different kind of support, need different kind of uh, uh, remediation, and um, and that's and there's no flexibility to deal with it. So I think that's why I think we're, we st we still struggle with this because it's we're actually serving a different segment of the population than we have been traditionally. Yeah. as we've expanded access to higher education. And really interesting because, I, I, and, and I, I couldn't agree more, I think what you're suggesting is that we open, that higher education looks at uh, new strategies to accommodate different kinds of learners. Mm. So we have the kind of learners that come to college and study for a period of time and they fit into that pathway and they manage just fine. But, but we know a large number of those don't. Yep. They come in, they don't quite fit, they're at a different pace. We don't have great ways within higher ed. You're suggesting, again, looking at that digital management, digital asset management, a way to accommodate for that. As I, and for example, if say somebody came in to do engineering, but they, they think the higher order stuff may be too difficult, but they like the field, but they've got an opportunity to enter, enter an engineering company at some level, well, couldn't they just choose to say, well, actually, you know what, I'm gonna leave the degree track. I'm gonna get some certificate that recognizes my learning, that mm -hmm. actually attests to competency in certain areas. Sure. But I want to go into work. And then wouldn't it be nice if, as I mm -hmm. go into the field, now I'm ready to complement that and actually move into a diploma or some higher order qualification mm -hmm. to recognize that. And I'm now more competent to do it. And we don't, it's just thinking, how do we offer the flexibility? Mm -hmm. So we assume that we've, I suppose MOOCs mm -hmm. has always was, was attacked at the beginning because of the very low completion rates. Mm -hmm. But we, the, the argument back is people aren't doing them, weren't entering them to complete always, they're entering to sample. Well, in university, people are going in with the aspiration to, to complete, but they're also on a discovery sure. about what they enjoy, what they're good at, can they cope, and, and we assign failure to people mm -hmm. for not going through, but actually maybe they need to change direction. And it's not, an it's not a failure and a, and, a, and a negative. It's an opportunity to reevaluate your path. So what's the role of the university, of the higher education system, in, in looking at that ecosystem, that digital landscape? I think, in, I think it's 
I think it's trying to... The universities have got always two conflicting missions in my book. There's an academic mission and there's uh, a mission to support the knowledge economy and industry. Mm -hmm. And they're not always working together easily. They sort of rub up against each other. Mm -hmm. But the fact that students need to be... Most of them will go into the point means you can't ignore that. So I think what universities need to do in terms of the digital ecosystem is try and try and create more flexible programs and stop and you know to that accommodate an expanded segment of the population that they're serving recognize that part of their job is to help people know what's right for them mm -hmm. you know we you know the, always the basic assumption is when they came in that's what they wanted to do and that's the right thing for them they have to go all the way through well things change technology is changing fast some of the things they learned at the beginning are different anyway by sure, the end sure. There needs to be a flexibility in the course design, and I think there needs to be a flexibility in pathways within and without mm -hmm. the institution. Mm -hmm. and, and then I think the, mm -hmm. even the bigger job is if we move out of just thinking about degrees and, and postgraduate work, what's the role of education across the life of, of some right, of the student? Right, right, right. And this goes into not just your alumni, but everybody needs to reskill. Sure. Sure. And where, sure. and, you know, again, it's a challenge to the mission of the university. Mm -hmm. What are we really here for? Yeah. Are we here to help our student, to help people right. adapt and learn and assimilate new knowledge across their life, mm -hmm. or are we just thinking about the beginning? And I think, mm -hmm. and to respond to those challenges is going to require agility and flexible design and repurposing content for multiple different opportunities, just to make it sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I think universities and Future Learn and all the providers in this area need to figure this out together because it's not easy. Sure. This is not easy, but it's, I think it's the right things to be thinking about and doing. In the right time. Correct. Yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been enjoyable, as always. Great to great see stuff. you. Welcome back to Penn State. And no, uh, we that's hope great you enjoy there. your visit. Thank you. Thank you.